In cooler weather, when birds want fat or need it to survive low temperatures, we offer them bark butter that we buy at Wild Birds Unlimited, as well as some peanut butter. The peanut butter is cheaper and we use it mainly as a diversion for the squirrels. They prefer it to bark butter, and we prefer for those appetites on four legs to eat the cheap stuff. The birds will eat peanut butter too if there's no bark butter, but bark butter is more nutritious for them. For years, we've put it on a trunk near the bedroom window, and we saw lots of different species there, even a Cape May warbler for several weeks one winter. What hooked me on spreading bark butter, though, was seeing this shy little woodland bird hitching up a tree like a fragment of tree bark defying gravity. Bark butter was created to attract these brown creepers, and if there are any of them in your neighborhood, they'll show up for it. Besides the brown creepers, though, we also saw house sparrows. Lots of house sparrows. And starlings. In fact, we finally had enough of watching starlings swarm over the bark butter like ants on candy. And in the winter of 2020 to 21, my husband began spreading it instead on a tree in the woods behind our house. Because the house sparrows and starlings don't much like to go into woods. And even though the tree is only 50 feet in from the edge, I've seen very few starlings there, and no house sparrows. In fact, now that there's only peanut butter in the yard, we've seen a drastic reduction in starlings. We don't know yet if that was a fluke or if it will hold true again next season when there's still no bark butter in the yard for them. For right now, we see just enough starlings to give us a chance to appreciate their dark beauty without having to take out a second mortgage to feed them all. It's late March and next fall we plan to put a bark butter feeder near a window again, one that will keep the starlings out. More about that later. For now, let's look at the traffic on this year's bark butter tree. Woods-loving chickadees, white-throated sparrows, Carolina wrens, cardinals, woodpeckers, and nuthatches. A few of these birds can walk on wood. That brown creeper jerks his way up tree trunks on size 20 feet. Since his foot splays out to one side enough to make him look like an outrigger canoe, he can't exactly walk upward. He's doing the splits. But he can bounce up, grabbing the bark with each hop and bracing with his tail. Of the woodwalkers, this cigar stub of a bird, the white-breasted nuthatch, is the champion. He's the counterpart of the brown creeper in that he forages by walking down tree trunks. Now sure, Carolina wrens can also walk head first down a trunk, but you won't find them skittering around on it like a wind-up toy. Nor will you find the Carolina bending his head back in this classic nuthatch pose. Now the nuthatch doesn't actually walk on a tree so much as hang from one foot than the other. According to ornithologists, each foot has a backward-facing toe with a curved claw that hooks around the edges of tree bark. Really? It's hard to believe he could weave around like a drunken ant using nothing but tiny grappling hooks. Next thing you know, they'll be trying to convince us that matter consists of subatomic particles that would fit by trillions on the head of a pin. Well, however the nuthatch does it, he reminds me of that Fred Astaire routine where camera tricks make him appear to dance on a vertical wall. Gravity? Never heard of it. Woodpeckers can also navigate on tree bark, but if the nuthatch is Fred Astaire, the woodpeckers are more like herky-jerky silent screen stars. They hitch up and down the tree by grabbing the bark with their claws and bracing their tails against the trunk. When they go down a tree, they have to back into every parking spot. But at least they get traction. Look at their feet and you'll see why. Thick, strong legs end in hefty-looking feet. Woodpeckers have four toes with the two outer toes pointing backward. Their claws are strong enough to punch through bark, their stiff tails stabilize them, and their short legs make it practical to stand upright on a vertical surface. The woodpeckers can snug their bodies up against the trunk and put away that bark butter. And their feet aren't their only useful equipment. 
just check out this female red belly's tongue. That sticky tool for slurping up insects also gloms onto bark butter chunks pretty well. Bottom line is that the nuthatches, brown creepers, and woodpeckers can sit down at a table in the bark butter bistro. The rest of the birds have to either grab carry out, one bite at a time, or perhaps cling, balancing like a butterfly. Songbirds simply lack the right climbing equipment. The white-throated sparrow, for example, slightly bigger than a downy woodpecker, possesses only delicate toes that might pierce a piece of flannel, but they slip and slide on tree bark. Songbird feet are meant for gripping horizontal twigs. Yeah, he and the cardinals will sometimes brace their tails and cling precariously for a snack, but it's a toss-up which is more awkward for them, splaying their soda straw legs or fluttering in and away. And in and away. The white throats have a favorite brush pile 15 feet away, so they are by far the most frequent visitors, flitting over from home base and back, or hanging out in the nearby tree branches. They're flocking birds even here, most often showing up with a few buddies. As frequent ground feeders, they burrow around in the ivy under the tree, foraging for dropped chunks of bark butter. I hope you can see why I think offering bark butter is worth the expense, but I understand why many people balk at feeding gangs of starlings. A friend of mine says she puts bark butter in a bluebird feeder. The feeder's holes will admit smaller birds like downies, Carolina wrens, chickadees, nuthatches, and sparrows. Now that scenario includes house sparrows, unfortunately, but no starlings. No hairy or red-bellied woodpeckers either, though. What to do? It's not like you can hire a bouncer that recognizes starlings and boots them out of your establishment. Well, you tell me if you found anything that feeds the larger woodpeckers but still keeps the starlings away. I'll click like on all comments about that so that other viewers can see what alternatives they might have. Of course, a certain number of people will suggest simply blasting the starlings to smithereens. But if you see the beauty of these birds and just want to control their numbers, you can check out the comments I like. This movie showed you downy woodpeckers and hairy woodpeckers without explaining how to tell the two similar species apart. If you'd like some help with that, check out this movie.